Welcome, my dear students and others, to my Chapter 11 continuing coverage of liquids and intermolecular forces following our textbook that is referenced in the description below. I begin with a funny video. Okay, I know it has nothing to do with chemistry, but years ago, my brother-in-law shared a hilarious YouTube video with me that I thought I would share with you, my dear students. Link is in the description below or possibly floating over my head as an in-video card. All right, so after this presentation, as well as some that might follow, which will cover sections three through seven of chapter 11 of our text, you will gain the following skills. That is, you will be able to answer questions about viscosity and surface tension, identify phase changes as exothermic or endothermic, describe a heating curve or heat curve to your friends, and calculate the final state and temperature of a system at equilibrium. You will also learn how to calculate from enthalpy data the heat required to vaporize a liquid, rank compounds by volatility, boiling point, and vapor pressure, correctly read and interpret phase diagrams, and be able to appreciate how cool liquid crystals really are. And I mean that in a colloquial sense. I'm not talking about their actual temperature. Okay, there's a lot to cover, so let's get into it. Beginning with viscosity. So some liquids flow very slowly, while others flow very quickly. The resistance of a liquid to flow is called its viscosity. Viscosity can be measured by timing how long it takes to flow through a thin vertical tube or by measuring the speed at which steel balls fall through it. The higher the viscosity number, the more viscous or thicker or slower poiling a liquid is. Now, a liquid's viscosity depends on two things. It's intermolecular forces, which we discussed in our previous video, linked to in the description below, and it's individual molecular structures. First, the stronger the liquid's intermolecular forces are, the more viscous it will be. Second, some liquid's molecules have shapes that let them get tangled with each other, which makes them more viscous. For a series of related liquids, viscosity increases with increasing molecular weight. As we can see in this table taken from our text, you'll notice that intermolecular force-wise, all of these have the exact same type, that is London dispersion forces. So what's really the difference? Yeah, it's the molecular weight because there's more carbons and hydrogens as we go down the series. And what happens to their viscosity? Yep, they all increase. Isn't that neat? Additionally, liquids' viscosities decrease with increasing temperature, and that should make sense. As you jack up temperature, molecular motion increases, which makes those molecules stick to each other less and less, and thus pour more quickly. We now move on then to surface tension. So some liquids like water behave as if they had an elastic skin on their surface, which allows little insects like water striders or water skeeters, depending on what you call them, to glide across their surface. This phenomenon is caused by an imbalance in the liquid's intermolecular forces at the liquid surface. As shown in this figure, from our text, again linked to in the description below, water molecules in the interior down here are attracted equally in all directions by their neighboring water molecules, while those right at the surface only experience a net downward force. This net downward force pulls them slightly toward the interior, reducing their overall surface area and making them pack together more closely right across the surface than the analogous molecules deeper down. This, of course, confers upon them surface tension, which allows really lightweight things to glide or float across them. That takes us then to this beautiful example problem. Hydrazine, hydrogen peroxide, and water, whose formulas are all shown right here, all have exceptionally high surface tensions compared with other substances of comparable molecular weights. I want you to draw Lewis structures of these three compounds and answer the question, what structural property do these substances have in common? And how might these account for their high surface tensions? I'll give you a hint. It's an intermolecular force. All right, we got more videos on this coming. Until next time, my dear students and others, please have an enjoyable rest of your day.